We're going to review the QuizLab Hub right here. And while it's made for a Mac Mini, I'm using it actually for something else. And I'm going to explain in the video, but let's go ahead and review it. Welcome back to my channel. What we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and review this. It's going to be called the Quiz Lab Q W I I Z L A B, and it's a it's a USB hub basically, but it's in the shape of your Mac Mini so that it connects directly to the Mac Mini for additional storage and different different types of connections. And this is the UH25 Pro UH25 Pro from Quiz Lab. I'm not sure I'm saying that correctly, but anyways, I wanted to go. I always wanted to check one of these out. And I heard this is one of the best ones you can get out there. So. Without further ado, here it is. And what I'm going to do is in this video, I'm going to go ahead and just give you some, all the pros about this that I found, a few little cons, but they definitely the pros outweigh them. I'm going to go ahead and show you. And then also at the end of the video, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm using this for, which is not actually for a Mac mini, which is kind of funny. Um, it's all how you use it, right? It doesn't, you know, this is still a hub, so it can be used for anything. But is this device any good? What are the specs on it? Without further ado, let's get into the video. I'm gonna go through it quickly. I'm gonna give you the specs, then the pros and the cons, and then what I'm using it for that's a little bit different and unusual, but still works just fine. Let's go. All right, so let's get into the video. Let's just do the specs first. So I'm gonna be putting up pictures as I talk, and you know, obviously the pictures will be associated with what I'm talking about. But this is gonna be one of those hubs you can see that you can actually place directly onto a Mac Mini just like this. And I'll have pictures of that, how that looks. It's very matched closely to the color of it. I like to put it on top, not the bottom, um, because of reasons of scratches and stuff, but we'll get into that in a second. Long story short though, this is a great hub because of the number of connections it has. And what you do is you obviously put this on top of your Mac Mini, you connect it to the Mac Mini, and then it provides you a number of different connections on the front of varying speeds. That's number one. Number two, that's the reason why this is such a positive, and I'll get into that in a second, is just the basically the compartment in here. You can have two different types of hard drives in here for storage and additional storage, which is really good compared to some of the competition out there. All right, so the specs on this thing, let's just get into it really quickly. Um, one thing to note on this model here though is you can't, I actually, right here I actually have an older Mac Mini. This is from 2011 and this one won't work with this device because this device uses USB-C to connect into the Mac Mini. So you need a USB-C connection in most cases if you really want it to connect at full speed. I guess it would work if you went USB-C to USB-A or what have you, but um, just keep in mind that this is more probably for a little bit newer Mac Minis, especially like the M1s and some of the newer Intel versions of it as well. It'll work just fine on that. I mean, it might work on the other ones, but uh, long story short, it's more for the newer ones with USB-C connection. All right, so without further ado, what does this have on it? I'll put up some information here. The reason I like this is because it definitely has a number of ports here. And uh, let's get into the ports that it offers on the front because it's actually a little bit different. So let's talk about ports. I'm gonna stick it right here for now. I'll show you close-ups. But the beauty of this is gonna be the storage that you can do and also the ports on the front of it. Those are huge positives on this unit. Number one, it has two different ports for storage and I'm gonna show you the compartments. But you can do an, basically a SATA 3.0 SSD drive um, and 2.5 inch drive slips right into here just fine. And then you can also do an M.2 NVMe drive in here as well. We'll get into the speeds in a second, but that offers you two different compartments for two different types of drives at once. So you can have a lot of storage in this device if it connects to your Mac mini or something else. Um, long story short though, that's actually a huge advantage because most of these only have one. All right, for the ports on the front, this is actually a great, great device. It has a lot more ports than some of the other ones and they're different speeds, which is great. I'll get into that. It's got USB-A 3.0, two of those. It's got a USB 3.1 Gen 2, a USB-A Gen 2 there. And then it's got a micro and, a, and a basically an SD card slot as well. And then finally, it's got a USB-C slot. Um, the USB-C now, that can connect up to 10 gigabits per second. So can this 3.1 Gen 2. And these other ones over here are up to 5 gigabits per second. But that up to 10 gigabits per second is key in this kind of a device. Most of them only go up to 5 gigabits per second. And we'll do some speed tests in a second. And again, on the back, you basically have two different ports, which is important. You have a USB-C, which connects you into your Mac Mini or your device. And you also have a power port. And what's that power port for? That power port is in case you want to power additional stuff. If this doesn't carry enough power, for you to have a whole bunch of different devices connected to this. You can plug in an additional power adapter in the back here, and that's actually going to be able to power some of the devices in the front. And that a lot of places don't have that, or a lot of hubs don't have that as well, and that's a big key there as well. 
All right, so basically when I did some speed tests on this, I went ahead and I connected it. I was getting about, you know, be a little under um, between three and 400 megabytes per second with the SATA drive. So it's very good speeds, you know, using, uh, I used an inland I tried at first, it was a little bit slower than I used a Samsung drive and it was working great. So that's gonna be with the SATA drive. On my speed test as well, I did also, I'm using Blackmagic, but I did the NVMe. Now when I connected this to an M1 type computer, at first I was only getting like around 585, you know, megabytes per second and an NVMe drive, which is still very fast. But I actually updated the uh, software on the M1 um, to be the newest version. I think Apple's actually kind of upgrading this to help with kind of throughput. And it actually went up to right around 700 megabytes per second on the NVMe connected to the USB-C port into an M1 computer. So keep that in mind, up to about 700 I got, which is crazy. So it's not gonna be nearly the speed of the NVMe, but it's gonna be pretty fast. Obviously it's up to 10 gigabits, so theoretically it should go up to 1,000, but it's not gonna fully reach that, just like any hub out there usually doesn't. So overall though, I was impressed with it. It's definitely fast enough for kind of workloads and stuff like that. Plus you get the two different slots there, all positives on this thing. I really like it. And then basically in order to install the drives and stuff like that, I'll just go really quickly and show you some more stuff here. It does come with a tool, uh, just a little screwdriver. I can't find it, it's right here. You get this in it, you get four screws. The only you know thing that I notice is it's just you know when you have to screw them in and out it's a little bit of a pain but it's not a big deal at all uh, you know if you're not going to be changing hard drives too much so that was actually really good as well. You also get two cables with this you know one's going to be a nice braided cable this is the one that connects to your Mac Mini or if something else it's a USB C cable here uh, and then you also get another data cable which is USB C to USB A type and they give those in the box for you as well and then it comes with some screws and some grommets to hold in the NVMe drive. Um, so overall, everything's good. And uh, I mean, I can't complain with it. So far, it's been working great. Um, it matches very well with the system. You can see some pictures here, how it matches. Uh, obviously, if you have a different color Mac Mini, like a darker one, it's not gonna match as well. You obviously know that. The color's off just slightly, but it's close enough for my own good. All right, and now let's just get into the cons really quickly. They're not even that big at all, and they're just a couple of them. So obviously you're not able to get maybe the full throughput of the NVMe drive. That has something more to do maybe with Apple because I noticed when they updated the software, it actually got a little bit faster there. That's number one. Number two is obviously gonna be, and this is a very, very minor one, is gonna be when you put this under, if you put the Mac Mini on top of this, this finish on here can scratch very easily, so you might end up scratching it pretty easily and get like little black lines on it. So keep, you have to keep this, it's kind of, you know, it's fragile, but you know, not fragile, but it can scratch easily. So you gotta, I like to put it on top of the Mac Mini. Um, that's another kind of con, but not really a con because you just have to take care of it. The third one basically is gonna be the, the drives themselves. If you're running, you know, in my test, I didn't see any overheating, but there's not like a ton, there's a cooling slot down there, but there's not like any type of, um, you know, conductive cooling that you can put on there or anything like that. So it gives you um, a little pad to put in there just to, you know, space it. It's nothing for cooling. So you might have to think about that. Maybe get a drive if you're using an NVMe drive. You know, number one, get a drive that may be, be able to be get cooler, uh, you know, maybe it runs cooler, or maybe you can get one that has a cooler built into it if it can fit in there. The other option is, is these aren't gonna run at the full speed of the NVMe anyway, so they're probably not gonna get as hot, which is a positive, kind of, because then it won't overheat the system either. I didn't see a lot of throughput degradations either when I was running my tests. It did drop maybe about 10 or 25% over a long time when I was running the tests, but overall, it's been very consistent with other hubs I've tested, so that's actually, a you know, I guess kind of a positive there as as well. All right, and the third kind is not a con either. It's basically the price. Now the price is actually, it's not a con. Let me just state that. I mean, I'm saying it only because there's other ones out there cheaper. But for what you're getting, this is about 100 bucks, 99 bucks, somewhere in that range. I'll have a link to this obviously in the description. You can check it out yourself. Um, but the, the reason for that, and I, you know, again, I think it's worth it, is because it has those two different slots for the hard drives, that's huge. It also has a number of connections that you can use in the front, and it goes up to 10 gigabits per second. While you're not able to get that, maybe some of the software, or some of the hardware built into this actual thing is limiting it a little bit. You know, I've seen it's very close if I plug in a hub off my, my any type of my computers here. I'm getting similar speeds with those other hard drives as well, so can't dock it on that either. Overall, it's actually a pretty good device. I like it a lot. Now, why am I using this? Why, what do I use this for that's so different than what I had said in the beginning? Why, you know, obviously you put this on your Mac Mini. Well, my Mac Mini M1 that I tested this on is not mine. I actually have a sample version and I'm gonna have to obviously, you know, obviously give that back. I have an older M1 here, um, M1, I have an older Mac Mini, I'm sorry. And this one, it doesn't work the best with that old version, 2011, but because of the connection types. But with that said, what I found this for and I love using it for is I actually connected on my desk 
directly to my M1 MacBook Air. So M1 MacBook Air works perfectly fine with this. You, you know, and, and it's very low profile as you can see. I'll have some pictures up here. But at the end of the day on your desk, it's perfect because it gives you all these ports up here. It gives you the connection speeds that you want just for some you know, pretty good tasks that you want to run. And it looks pretty sleek and it can be hidden or you can you know, put it upright if you want. Whatever you want to do, it's very low profile. You can even maybe put, you know, an, uh, let's just say you want more ports for uh, Mac uh, iMac over there. You can actually maybe put the iMac stand on here. So, you know, there's a lot of different uses for it. It doesn't have to be for a Mac Mini. It can be for any of the Macs. It works really well. I've tested it. And that's how I use it. So I actually use it with a MacBook Air, not even a Mac Mini. And that's my kind of, you know, that's what I wanted to say that's a little bit different here is you can use it for anything. Just don't, don't get in the mindset just because it's shaped like that. That's what you have to use it for. All right, so to wrap up the video, overall, like I said, give it a shot. I've only tested all, all disclaimers in you know, a couple weeks now. I haven't run massive workloads across it, but I've been using it for some of my basic workflows. I have not seen overheating. I've only seen a little bit of degradation when it gets into kind of a longer type you know, save or when it moves traffic back and forth for long periods of time. Um, I haven't seen any heat maybe because it doesn't, it's not able to reach the highest speeds of the NVMe drives. The SATA drives stay pretty cool. So overall, I've had no issues with it so far in my testing. Again, I'm guessing I've, I, you know, I'm guessing I've used Samsung drives on this and I've used um, the inland drives and they've worked fine. I've heard some things online, people, you know, talking, some of the drives may or may not work as good. So you got to do your due diligence. I've only been able to test a couple drives on this. And uh, like I said, just the, the mainstay Samsung drives. Um, and also the, you know, I have a, you can see the picture in my, in my video, um, the inland drives work pretty good as well. Oh, other than that, I'm not sure. I mean, I can't vouch for anything else because I haven't tested it. Anyways, let's wrap up the video. It's getting kind of long. I just wanted to say overall, I like this device. It's um, something that I would recommend if you have a hundred bucks and you want a really good hub with a lot of different storage options. Again, Amazon's got a good return policy. So I always say, just test it out. If you don't like it, you can return it. Um, again, I can't test everything. It's a disclaimer. I, I know there's other things that may or may not work for everyone. There's different versions of software people are running, different computers, different ages. I just don't know. I just can tell you my personal experience. It works for me. It works good. I plugged it in. It worked instantly. So at the end of the day, that's all I can say. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Peace.